Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's just gonna be a quick video about my Denon AVR. I have the 4700 that's powering my home theater here. We're just gonna go through some of the settings and how I've chosen to set my system up with all the, the various settings and options that the Denon gives you. It can be kind of challenging, kind of confusing at first, and I've had some people ask what settings I'm running on mine, so we're just gonna kind of go through the menus real quick and talk about what each of the settings do and where I have my settings set for my system in my basement here. Let's just get right to the settings and start walking through. We'll go from there. Okay, here we go. Right now you're seeing the screensaver from the Shield Pro. So here's our Shield Pro. We'll go to the Denon. As soon as I hit the setup button, this is the screen that comes up. So starting at the top, we have our audio menu. When we go into that menu right now, it's grayed out, but it's center level adjust. And that simply adjusts the center channel volume for all sources. There's nothing plain right now, so I can't adjust that. Subwoofer level adjust. This goes in and I can adjust my subwoofer out one and subwoofer out two. And in my setup, my subwoofer out one goes out to my mini DSP HD as one output. From there, there's four outputs on the mini DSP. So I have two of the outputs going to two pairs of my front 18s that are behind this screen and then output three and four run to the back of the room to the two 12 inch SVS PB1000 Pro subwoofers. So that's how it goes in and out of the mini DSP for my six total subwoofers. And my subwoofer two output goes out of the Denon into an older Onkyo receiver, which then goes out to power the bass shakers. And there's six total. To adjust the intensity of the bass shakers, all I have to do is turn the volume up or down on that separate receiver versus having to come into a setup menu and change it. The bass sync is also grayed out here. I can't change anything here, but it synchronizes the timing of the low frequency sound for Blu-ray discs. Sound parameter, when you go into here, you have subwoofer on or off, which would be an easy way to turn them all off if you're not wanting to use them. Maybe it's after hours or you have kids in bed or whatever the case may be. Restore, it, the description is that it restores compressed audio signals. Mine is off, I don't use that feature. My audio delay is when there's incorrect timing between video and audio signals. You can go in here and adjust it until you get it just right. That could be something if you're running a really long run of an HDMI cable, there could be a delay from the processing to the time that it displays on screen. I don't need that, so that feature is off for me. Volume parameters, there's a couple different options in this menu. Your scale, there's two options. You have the negative 79 and a half decibels, to positive 18 decibels. And that's the most common one because when you get to zero, that is considered reference volume. The other option here is zero to 98. So I leave it on this one so I know how close to reference I'm getting. You can limit the maximum volume that you wanna be able to go. So you can set it by decibels or just leave it off. Power on level, this is what the volume level will do whenever you turn the AVR receiver on. I have it set to negative 25, that way it's not super loud and blasting me and because the other option you can have it is to like last volume when you shut it off or anywhere in between here. So this is kind of a nice quiet and I can adjust it from there. You can change the mute level so that it's completely muted or you can set it to negative 20 or negative 40. Negative 20 and negative 40, you'll still hear some sound out of your speakers. Full, you won't hear anything when you hit the mute button at all. Odyssey. You have a couple different options here. The Multi-EQ XT32. You have reference, left and right bypass. It'll bypass the whole Multi-EQ XT32 on the front and left and right speakers, but set reference to everything else. You have a flat setting or an off. Dynamic EQ will continually adjust the sound for optimal listening at all volume levels. My understanding of this is that it does a lot to do with your low frequency channel. When you turn the volume down, it'll actually increase the bass levels so that you can hear them because at quieter levels it's harder to hear your bass. But since I've gone through and did my whole room EQ and set my house curve, mine automatically is louder at lower volumes because of that. So I leave that off. You can totally turn it on and try it and see if you like it. 
you might love it. I haven't even really tried it yet in my situation, but it's not gonna hurt to try it and just depending upon what you like, what your preference is. Dynamic volume will keep the volume range at a constant. So instead of having loud parts in movies and quiet parts in movies, if this is on, it'll try and keep everything the same range of volume and there really won't be a difference between loud and soft sounds. I have it set up on speaker preset two that this is turned on. So I'm, I'm watching at night, the kids are in bed, there isn't that loud and soft difference in volume. It kind of keeps everything the same all the way across the board so that I don't have a really loud part in the movie or something that I'm not expecting and have to worry about waking up the kids or company or whatever the case may be. So the Odyssey LFC, I don't use this either. This is off. The description is that it dynamically monitors monitors the low frequencies and prevents them from traveling through the walls. Not sure exactly how that works, but that is an option. So that's everything in the Odyssey. The Graphic EQ, that's grayed out. You can only use this if you turn Odyssey off. Video, you've got a whole bunch of different things in here. Picture adjust, it'll match the type of signal or viewing environment. That's off on mine. HDMI setup, my HDMI audio goes out through my AD AVR. You have pass-throughs where you can actually pass the HDMI signal through the AVR and out to your display with the AVR itself being off. I don't use that because if I'm gonna be using anything, my AVR has to be on in order for me to power everything. So that is off in my situation. I don't have any type of HDMI control, so that's all off as well, but you can see there's quite a few options in here for setup of video and HDMI. Output settings, a couple different things in here too. Everything's in auto for the most part. I don't think I changed anything at all in this menu when I initially set up my system. Compo component video out, I don't have any type of a component video in. I'm not using this, but if I was, you could choose the main zone or zone two. On-screen display, anytime you change the volume, if I do it right now, you'll see the scale at the bottom of the screen. Your volume, you could change that from the bottom of the screen to the top or off. So when you change the volume, nothing happens. So I'm changing the volume right now and now I have no indicator, whereas I can also change it to the top and when I change my volume, now it's right up on top, right in the way. Move that at bottom. Info, you can have on, off, so that's the on-screen display when changing sound modes or inputs. And now playing, when you're listening to the Heos music or tuner sources, you're selecting how long to show the on-screen display. So always on or auto off will turn off the display in 30 seconds. Your screensaver, on or off, 4K, 8K. You have enhanced for 4K, you have 8K enhanced, or standard. I leave mine on the enhanced option. This is your basically what they call the handshake of your HDMI cable. Leave all this to auto. I don't have anything to do with that in my TV format. You have NTSC or PAL. Mine was set to NTSC. I haven't had any problems with that. Here's your inputs. Source rename. When this menu switches over here and shows up, you can label your sources so that they're easy to recognize. I primarily just have my Shield Pro and then my Panasonic UB820 4K player. Those are the two main inputs that I use. You can hide sources that you're not using. So all those at the bottom, for example, 8K, TV, audio, CD, phono, tuner. If you hide those, they won't show up in your selection process, just making it a little faster to cycle through and find which input you typically use. And source level, you can change uh, your decibels on your analog and digital inputs. So that's everything in inputs. Speakers is a big one. You have your Odyssey setup, but your manual setup is very useful as well. Your amp assign will choose, this is when you're initially setting up your system, you can choose how you want your speaker layout to be and how many amplifiers you're going to use in the Denon AVR itself or for example if you're going to set up for an external amplifier. For example if I go through here a couple couple different options here there's one that says preamp and that would be as if I'm not using any amplification from my Denon and I'm going to externally power every single one of my speakers in my setup. The only thing I'd be using the Denon for in this case would be for the processing power of the Denon. If you're using different zones or different rooms, there's all kinds of different options in here. But getting back to mine, mine's set to 9.1 channels 
On my floor, I have my five channel bed layer, my front, center, and right, right surround, left surround. For my five floor channels, I have four height channels, as you can see in the graph over there. And they are currently set up to top front and top rear. A lot of different options in this choice too. So there's a, a rear height. You can have front height and surround heights. You can have front and rear heights top rears, front heights, there's a whole bunch of different combinations here, but the only option that was all four ceiling speakers were top front and top rear, so that's where I set mine for my four overhead Atmos channels. And once you set all that up, then you can drop down here to view terminal config, and this will show you a picture of the back of your speaker connections. Since you just configured how your heights are gonna be used, when you get over to your height one and height two, underneath of it in blue lettering, my height one is the top front, and my height two is designated as my top rear. So now you know which speakers your right and left and your right and left for top front and top rear, which terminals to connect them to on the back of your receiver. So very helpful graph in figuring all that out. So that's everything in amp assign your speaker config. You go into here and you have everything set to small because you're using your LFE channel which pushes everything to your subwoofer system. Up next is your distances and this will be set after running your Odyssey setup with the Odyssey microphone. Your levels is you go into your test tone and now you can actually hear my left front speaker as it's highlighted in the visual display as well. So if I drop down to center, the center channel is highlighted and I have sound for my center channel. Right front, right rear, left rear, top front, top rear. That was the right side. Here you have top rear, top front, left, subwoofer, and subwoofer two. And if you change subwoofer one and two together, you can see that they both change at the same time. So that's in your test tone. We back up one more time. We have crossovers. Here's where you can individually set all your crossovers to your fronts, your centers, your surrounds, and your tops. And I have all these set up based off of measurements that I did with RoomEQ Wizard and my U-Mic 1. You can see that video that I did and how I chose these particular crossovers for my system. Bass is simply your subwoofer mode. If you want your bass going to your mains, which I don't believe most people do, as you have a dedicated subwoofer system, you leave this on LFE, and then this is your crossover for the LFE channel. I have that at 120 hertz, but there's a couple different options you can do here, depending upon where you want your bass to start for your low frequency channel. Two channel playback is pretty, pretty basic as it sounds. And here's that speaker preset, where you have preset one, and preset two. Preset one is everything is the way Odyssey and I set it up to full range. I set preset two up to save the dynamic volume to turn on in the Odyssey setup so that it kind of gets rid of those high and low volume ranges and keeps everything constant. And it also automatically turns down my subwoofer output to a lower volume as well, so I don't have as loud of subwoofer throughout whatever I'm watching as well. So mostly for night viewing or after hours when the kids are in bed, in my case, that's what I use that for. So that's everything in speakers. Network is, is that, if you're hooking it up, if you're Wi-Fi or if you've hardwired it to your home network. Your Heos account is the music. And then you just have some general stuff in here, whether you're in any different zones, you can change stuff on your front display, dimmers, channel indicators. Here's where you can check for firmware updates if you don't have it on auto update or if you just want it to notify you anytime there is and then you can choose when you want it to go. I also use the save and load feature. If you have a little thumb drive on the front panel, you can save all of these settings to a thumb drive so if something happens and your settings get messed up or maybe after a firmware update if something were to happen you could simply load your settings after you've got everything all dialed in where you want it. A simple backup is very nice to have. You can lock all your settings so they don't accidentally get changed and here's where you would reset it back to the factory default settings. Setup Assistant will simply walk you through some of the initial setup if you need help with anything. I have never used it myself, so I can't comment a whole lot, but here's a couple of the different options that are in this menu. And that should do it for settings, how I have my system set up. If you have any questions about anything, please let me know in the comments below. 
Again, this is the Denon AVR 4700 that I am using to power all of my system. I am not using any external amplifiers for any of my main speakers. I am powering everything from the Denon except for my bass shakers is the only thing that I'm using an external amplifier on and the four 18 inch subwoofers that are behind the screen are also externally amplified. The two SVS PB1000 Pros naturally have their own amplifier built in as well. I hope this helps some of you. It's kind of confusing at first, but play around with it. See what options you like, what options you don't like. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.